Intranuclear ophthalmophagia is very interesting and important to understand because it is 7% of MS attacks and is giveaway for MS and is often tested on exam. So that's why it's, it's extremely important for you guys because there will be a question about intranuclear ophthalmophagia uh, in, in exams uh, in step one and step two. So what is intranuclear ophthalmophagia? Intranuclear ophthalmophagia is a loss of ability of coordination between two separate cranial nerve uh, nuclei. That's it. Two cranial nerve nuclei who are coordinating together cannot coordinate together anymore. So it's intranuclear in between nucleus and it's called ophthalmoplegia because the two nuclei that are trying to coordinate are the um, ophthalmic motor nuclei and they're trying to work together to try to do a job, an important job. And that's why it's called ophthalmoplegia, that the eyes become weak in a certain way. Now, what is that job? So the eyes have to move to track, right? To left, right? To, to follow something. You know, you are seeing a horse race or car race and you're trying to follow the car. The eyes have to move together. If one eye is not in sync with the other eye, then the eyes will uh, have a problem. Then, then you will, the, the visual will become blurred or double. Now, the problem with that is that the movement of one eye is controlled by a different nucleus or, or, or nerve, motor nerve, and the other eye is, straw, is horizontal tracking, is controlled by a different nerve. So remember, the medial rectus will bring the eye in, the lateral rectus will make the eye out. So as you're tracking to the right, for example, the one side is medial rectus is moving the eye in, and the other side of lateral rectus is moving the eye out. So uh, horizontal movement or tracking of the eyes is always a medial rectus on one side and lateral rectus on the other side. And the problem with this is that medial rectus is controlled by the third motor neuron, neuron or nerve and third motor nerve nucleus, while the lateral rectus is controlled by the sixth. So a third of one eye and the sixth of the other eye have to work together to keep the eyes working in one go. And that is done by a very special pathway that connects the two which is called medial longitudinal fasciculus. Very, very tiny thing, very little tiny thing that comes down from the third nerve to sixth nerve of the opposite eye. So it's connecting third nerve on one side, third motor nucleus, and the sixth motor nucleus of the opposite eye to try to give that communication, hey, we need to move together so we are in sync. Now, there is one other little information to know, which is, the, which is this PPRF, paramedian pontine reticular formation. It's a reticular formation. Reticular formation is just loose neurons that are not isolated as a nucleus. So there's no boundary around it to say, okay, it's a nucleus uh, on, on uh, autopsy or transsexual uh, section of the brain. And so it's a reticular formation. It's in the bonds, so it's called pontine reticular formation. And it's paramedian, so it's right next to the midline. So it's called paramedian pontine reticular formation, PPRF. Now, this area is important because it helps correct the distance between the third and the sixth nerve. Now, so what has happened is that the third nerve is up high in midbrain and sixth nerve is down here in pons, nucleus. Now, it's a distance. Now, if the information of horizontal tracking came down to third and then the third sent that information to sixth, hey, I'm gonna move to the other side, let's move together. And there is a delay that can happen because of the distance between the two. It's tiny delay. But if that happens over and over time, then it will create a kind of a blur all the time. You know, initiation of movement or something like that will always be tricky, especially faster movement thing like racing cars. It'll be hard to see racing cars. Now, what paramedian pontine reticular formation does, PPRF does, is that it corrects for that gap between the two. It makes it so that both are moving about the same time. I'm not going to go into detail on why or how it does it. Uh, you know, you could understand or elaborate or, or think or, or run your imagination wide. But eventually the goal of PPRF, along with medial medi 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 longitudinal fasciculus and along with the third nerve motor nucleus is to try to move the eyes together. What happens in intranuclear ophthalmoplegia is that there is a loss of connection between the two. So the lesion can be in medial longitudinal fasciculus, the lesion can be in the third motor nucleus itself also damaging the medial longitudinal fasciculus. The lesion can be in the periburntine reticular formation and, and also can damage the sixth nerve nucleus. So any of these lesions is possible, but for purity's sake, 
let's just say medial longitudinal fasciculus has been damaged. And there is a long gap between third and sixth, long enough, few millimeters, and you know, maybe a centimeter. And that is enough that a tiny millimeter, one millimeter lesion of MS plaque can happen just in medial longitudinal fasciculus. And it happens all the time, at least 7% of the time in MS attacks, there is a damage specifically to that MLF. Now we don't know why. Why MLF, such a tiny area, is so sensitive to damage. And it happens sometimes that it's only that MLF is damaged, one millimeter only, nothing else. Everything else is fine. That's less common, but that does also happen. What would happen if there is no coordination between the two? That's very important to know. The third nerve, if the damage is only in MLF, if the, third, if the damage is only in MLF, the third nerve can still function fine. And sixth nerve can still function fine. The sixth nerve can move, third nerve can move. The eyes can go right, eyes can go left. Only there is a delay between the two. That's it. And especially because demyelination still leaves the exon. So although information is still coming down from third to six, the information is now even more slower because there is demyelination of MLF. The demyelination of MLF slows down that information, so there's a delay. So as the eye starts moving from right to towards the right, the one eye starts star, falls behind. Which eye will fall behind is an interesting question, right? And that's where this information is useful that the PPRF, which is coordinating this movement, is closer to sixth. So usually the third one is the one that falls behind, third is medial rectus. So medial rectus of that eye will fall behind. So it's of course, it's usually unilateral, so it's only one medial rectus. So let's say it's the left medial rectus that's gonna fall behind. So what would happen is that as the eye go out to the right, let's say one side, that lateral rectus will move the eye first and the left eye will move late. So early on when you take a picture, you will see that the eye is not moving along, uh, you know, is, it, it seems as if the right eye has moved and the left is still there. Eventually, if you keep try looking, the left eye also move. If pure MLF lesion, right eye moves, left eye still has not followed, has not followed, and then it slowly starts following. So a slower movement and lag that can create transient double vision and blurred vision, especially when looking to one side. Now, this picture here shows you problem with both eyes. As the right eye is looking to the right, the left eye is not following. And as the left eye is looking to the left, the right eye is not following. So that is called bilateral and sometimes alternating intranuclear optimism. It's called alternating because you know it, it shows problem when looking to one and then it shows problem when looking to the left. So it's a bilateral alternating intranuclear optimism of PGA. Now it gets even more complicated than that. Uh, I'm probably not gonna explain all of those details. For example, there is one and a half syndrome, and you know the question could be that uh, is um, you know uh, you know patient really able to see or not able to see? What if the damage of seventh nucleus along with it was there's a damage of the third nucleus and so on and so forth? So you will see some variations if you go online. Uh, but as you come to the clerkships, we can talk about it. If there is an interest now.